Good morning, everyone. Appreciate you being here. Welcome to the June 12th Sandag Board of Directors meeting. I uh, would like to uh, start with the Pledge of Allegiance. If we could get the uh, flag up on the screen, please. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. For... Thank you. Uh, before we jump into the meeting, I want to ask our clerk, uh, Tessa, to confirm that we have a quorum, please. Thank you. Good morning, Chair. Yes, we have a quorum for this. Thank you. A uh, quick process check. We are continuing to use cameras. Uh, and live public comment today. In fact, uh, this will be our standard process going forward with our virtual meetings. Uh, I will ask General Counsel John Kirk to provide a quick reminder on how the public comment will work, please. John. Good morning, Chairman. Trying to be careful here. As noted on the cover page in today's meeting agenda, in addition to emailed comments, the public may also provide live comments during today's board meeting. In order to provide live comments, the public should register for the GoToMeeting webinar on the link that is provided on the cover page of today's agenda. Join the meeting by clicking on the Join Webinar link provided in the confirmation email that you will receive upon registering. When public comments are called for on an item, click on the raise hand icon in the GoToWebinar control panel. That would be at the top right of your screen. You'll be called on by the name that you registered with and may provide comments for the allotted time. Please do not mute your microphone. The organizers will unmute you when you are called on. The instructions for providing live comments are also on the bottom of the cover page of today's meeting agenda, which can be accessed from the home, home page of Sandag's website at www.sandag.org. All comments received, whether emailed or live, will be made a part of today's meeting record. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. Sounds good. Uh, we will get started with public and member comment. Uh, Tessa, do we have uh, public uh, comment on non-agenda items? I do not have non-agenda public comment. Thank you, Tessa. Uh, member comment items. I know uh, Acting Director uh, Gustavo de Yarda uh, wanted to make a comment. Uh, if you can turn on your camera and unmute your microphone. Yes, good morning. Hopefully you can hear me all right. Yes, we can. Perfect. Thank you. I wanted to, I'll take only a couple of minutes, but I, I had a few things that I wanted to share that I think will be in, of interest to all the board members. I'll start with uh, the fact that yesterday, uh, this is California Senate confirmed uh, our Caltrans director talks on Mishakin. So he, he has been confirmed uh, uh, by the Senate. And as you know, he was appointed by the governor and he has been in, acting in that capacity since last September. Um, switching gears, uh, next week on June 15th, Caltrans will file the notice of preparation for the environmental document for the, for the Coronado Bridge suicide prevention barrier. What, what filing of the NOP means is, is the official start of the environmental phase for the Coronado suicide prevention barrier. Uh, it starts also a 30-day public scoping period where we can receive comments from the public as well as from agencies. So that 30-day period will run between June 15th and July 14th. And we will also have a virtual public scoping meeting on June 25th from 5 to 7 p.m. And I can send the links and the information um, to, to the uh, board clerk so that you, all the members can have that information. But separate letters 
uh, with all that information are going to all the stakeholders involved with that project. So that is very good news. Um, we received the word from the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services that the state is make, making personal protective equipment available for all organizations, public, nonprofit, as well as private commercial entities to assist in the reopening of the state through stage three of the resilience roadmap. Uh, for commercial entities, uh, this is a resource available if normal channel, channels or local sources are not able to pro pro fulfill their needs for PPEs. So I will again um, send the link. There's a form that agencies or uh, commercial entities that are interested in participating in that offer, in that opportunity, I will send a link to the uh, clerk so that it can be distributed to all the cities. We're also letting the chambers of commerce know as well as small businesses and, and things like that. Um, starting today, uh, we will, uh, and taking advantage that traffic is still low on our freeways, we will have a weekend closure for the, of the northbound off ramp on Interstate 5 to um, Encinitas uh, Boulevard. And, and that will mark the beginning of a series of weekend closures where, again, we're taking advantage that the freeway uh, volumes are still low uh, to reconstruct those ramps. Um, and it's a lot easier to, to try to do it um, over a series of nightly closures and also a lot safer. So it's a win-win uh, for everyone. And last but not least, um, on June 16th, Caltrans will uh, uh, restart uh, picking up uh, litter uh, from our freeways and as well as uh, letting our adopt the highway members come back to our freeways to pick up litter. Uh, I thank everybody for their patience uh, during the last few months. Uh, uh, the number of litter has been accumulating on our freeways and, and hopefully starting next week you will, you will see us out there uh, uh, taking care of that and, and uh, over the last few days and also into early next week we will be training our adopt the highway partners as well as our staff on how to handle litters so that um, they cannot be uh, exposed to COVID. Uh, one thing that I would mention is that the um, we are not uh, removing homeless encampments per CDC guidelines yet um, and we're addressing those on a case-by-case -case basis. I know that some of you have reached out to our office and, and when you do, we will go out there and assess what we can do. So again, thank you for your patience and sorry for taking so much time. Not a problem at all, thank you. Uh, do we have other uh, board comment? Um, so please turn your camera the, on. Uh, uh, I think I heard, maybe it was uh, yeah. Deputy Mayor Jack Feller. Well, I see. Yeah, you want you want me or Serge? Well, seeing as how Serge is up on the screen, I'll take Serge. Okay. Our uh, director to address the issue of the horrendous litter on our uh, state highways. Um, this is especially the case in South County. Uh, it's been a problem really for the last two years, if not more. Uh, I would argue that. Um, San Diego may have, in Southern California, the filthiest freeways in any developed nation, industrialized nation in the world. In fact, I've seen more litter on our highways than I've seen in uh, third world countries. Uh, and so uh, I would argue this is a trash crisis. Um, so I appreciate the attention to this matter. I would hope that this trash is eviscerated or cleaned up completely from our San Diego County state highways. Um, this cannot continue. All this trash washes into um, our bays and beaches, um, where all the other jurisdictions like the city of Imperial Beach, all of you who have stormwater permits are then expected to clean it up with no additional resources from the state. So um, I would hope that, I would also hope that the CHP works with Caltrans uh, to uh, find, uh, especially the waste hauler companies and all the other f folks who are hauling uh, uh, waste that things are coming off the road, but frankly, I'm only 56 in my entire life in California and all those years I've been in California, I have never seen our roadways filthier or covered in more garbage to the point where it looks like people throw their bags of garbage on the highways as well as all their furniture. I've never seen uh, the state of California refrain from cleaning up trash and keeping it on the highways as long 
you can go to other states in, Cal uh, in our country and you do not see this type of, of trash. So we have a trash crisis and I appreciate Caltrans uh, for starting this process, but definitely we need to do a lot better. So thank you. Thank you, Serge. Uh, uh, Mr. Feller. Thank you. I would like to <clears throat> thank uh, 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 this, uh, the director for uh, actually taking the step to let us know. Um, I, I would say that uh, I, I've been all over the state, and I don't. I, I think uh, the the crisis is here, but uh, the, regarding the trash. Um, but there is there's lots of really bad places in this state, and I I, I appreciate him taking concern for our uh, neck of the woods. And uh, on a selfish note, please start in North County. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Uh, Vice Chair Blakespear, did you have a comment? Yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just want to reiterate my. Um, feeling that the trash issue is substantial and it's important that we prioritize it. I'm glad there are other people on this board who are also giving voice to that. I've had uh, several conversations um, with Caltrans leadership about this and I do appreciate the update. You know, um, road construction and home construction was exempted from the stay at home order. And it is a little bit disappointing to hear that there has not been any trash pickup happening. I hope that there is a recommitment to that as a key part of our quality of life and an effort to raise the bar in our uh, for our standards. I know just to share with the board, um, in case people aren't aware of this, there is a level of service expectation from Caltrans and they need to be picking up trash and then it's evaluated according to a standard in the same way that road uh, maintenance is. So it, we as a board could be more engaged in this topic and ask to have um, quarterly reports and pictures and to try to see things improve in this area. To me, that's something that would be useful uh, because it affects all of our cities and it really is our public space. When people are driving on our freeways and getting off the on and off ramps and they're really trashy, it degrades our experience in, in this county. And I think we deserve and should have streets that are clean. So um, I just wanna add my voice to that and say, I appreciate the update today and hopefully Caltrans can immediately get on the cleanup effort if it is behind uh, what, it, what it was before we went into a lockdown three months ago. Okay, thank you for thank you for calling on me. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, Council Member Baber from La Mesa asked that I share the following statement with the board. Mr. Baber and and Christine Alicio are not able to join us today. They are focused 24/7 on La Mesa cleanup and restoration, and, and they just wanted me to pass along their appreciation uh, for folks from every walk of life from all around the county uh, for their support. Uh, also want to share that the uh, Transnet Independent Taxpayer Oversight Committee, otherwise known as ITOC, is looking to fill one vacancy on its seven-member committee. They are looking for a professional with experience in real estate, land economics, and or right-of-way acquisition. ITOC membership is open to qualified individuals from throughout the region with the appropriate skills and experience. Individuals interested in applying can obtain details regarding ITOC member responsibilities and an application by contacting Sandag or visiting the Sandag website. Candidates are required to fill out a uh, Form 700 to ensure there are no conflicts of interest. However, individuals employed with organizations doing business with Sandag are not precluded from submitting an application for consideration. Applications are due to Sandag by July 1st. And uh, with that, I will open it up to uh, public comment. Uh, I can't clearly see if there are any hands raised. Uh, I think we do not have any. Uh, best, anything else from the board before we move on? Chair, we do not have any hand raised. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, then we will move on to uh, item number two, policy <laughs> advisory committee chairs reports. Uh, do we have any reports from uh, any of our PAC chairs? I know Mayor <laughs> Silas is not with us today. Uh, Pack chairs going once, going twice. 
seems like we do not. Uh, once again, I can't see if there are any hands raised for public comment. So if there is, you can stop me. Uh, we will, uh, absent that, move on to uh, item number three, the executive director's report. Hassan. Sarah Voss, before we move to that, um, I just want to make uh, for the record that we do not have public comments on item two. And I believe I've already Thank stated you. that there were no non-agenda public items, but yes, if you not, there are none. Thank you, Tessa, for keeping us on the rails here. Uh, Executive Director's report, Hassan. Good morning. Thank you, Chairman. Um, board members, good morning. Um, start with uh, our Chief Economist, Ray Major, and his team will be issuing a new report next week. We will provide the board with a draft of the report following the meeting. I'm proud of the data team. They have done amazing work to show the impact of COVID-19 on the region's economy. And in this case, the report focuses on the extraordinary impact the pandemic and economic crisis had had on our black and Hispanic communities. This is timely report and one we hope will benefit you and your jurisdiction as our region begins to recover. We believe it will be instrumental in helping our elected leaders shape policies and programs to help the communities in need. Now I would like to turn it over to Chair Vass for comments on this important issue. Thank you, Hassan. You know, as, as regional elected officials and leaders, it's important for us to think strategically about how to coordinate with the Black and Hispanic communities and all communities in need and determine what programs and policies we can put in place to guide an equitable recovery. Uh, I want to give you a few stats from the draft that you're going to see later <coughs> today. When compared with the white population, Black and Hispanic populations are more than four times as likely to live in areas that have been impacted by COVID-19 and unemployment. More than two thirds of the region's Blacks, 70% and Hispanics, 67% reside in zip codes with higher than average unemployment rates. And approximately half of Blacks, 53% and Hispanics, 49% live in zip codes with higher than average COVID-19 cases. Our communities are like a chain link. If one link is broken, and the strength of the whole chain is compromised. We need to assure that all of our communities are strong in this region. To highlight this important information, I'll host a virtual briefing on the finalized data with Sandag Chief Economist Ray Major to help elected leaders and community representatives understand the impacts of COVID-19 and its disastrous effects on the economy and the Black and Hispanic communities. When the date and time has been determined, I'll get back to you with details. Uh, but just wanted you to know that basic information at this point, and I will turn it back to Hassan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A uh, couple of updates on state and federal legislation. Um, uh, just like us, uh, Sacramento is focused on its budget for next year. A Governor Newsom budget proposal includes $14 billion in budget cuts that would take effect unless federal funds materialize to replace the proposed cuts. The legislator's proposal includes the anticipated federal funds in the budget, but then establishes trigger solutions that take effect should the federal funds not materialize. Monday, uh, 6.15, is the deadline for the legislator to pass budget bill. The legislator plan to pass their version while they continue to negotiate with the governor on the final version. From a transportation perspective, each of the proposal estimates a reduction in fuel tax revenues of $1.8 billion through 24-25. However, we continue to be advised that we do not expect to see a slowdown in project delivery in the short term. In Washington, D.C., the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee released the text of its five-year service transportation reauthorization bill last week. The Invest Act uh, would provide nearly $500 billion over five years of investment in capital infrastructure for highways, transit, and rail projects, and include COVID-19 relief funding for state, cities, tribes, and transit agencies. It's scheduled for a markup on June 17th, and staff will be monitoring the proposal. 
on the Central Mobility Hub, uh, NAVWAR, uh, Sandag staff is continuing its partnership with the United States Navy to develop uh, the, the hub. I'm glad to report that AB 2731, authored by Assembly Member Todd Gloria and co-authored by President Pro Tem Atkin, was officially unanimously passed by the Assembly yesterday and will now head to the Senate. The bill clarifies the strength and strengthens certain public participation provisions and government transparency in the California Environmental Act, CEQA. This is great news for our Central Mobility Hub project. I just um, talk a little bit about the discussion you had uh, last uh, meeting regarding the Rancho Relax project. During the mayor board meeting, an item was presented to the Rancho Lilac project. The item was to award the contract for the permanent management of open space property owned by Caltrans in the Valley Center area of the county. A concern was raised regarding possible future preclusion of a recreational trail through the property identified in the county's general plan. Prior to bringing this item back to the board for action, Sandag staff We'll discuss the matter with the County of San Diego, the contractor, and Caltrans to see if a solution is available that would satisfy all parties. We have a meeting set up with the interested party to do just that. I believe our staff will come to a successful resolution to this issue, and then we'll bring it back to the board later this summer. Uh, just for those of you who do not know the, about the project, just a little background. The land was acquired in accordance with the requirement of the Transnet Ordinance for the State Route 76 widening, and now Caltrans and Sandag desire to turn the land over to a qualified long-term land manager. After a competitive RFE uh, request for proposal process, a state qualified land manager was selected and contract terms were negotiated. Uh, as you heard earlier today on the Del Mar Bluff, very good news. $11.6 million uh, were awarded by the U.S. Department of Transportation State of Good Repair Program. I want to thank Congress Member Mike Levin, who led the region's congressional delegation in supporting securing this very important grant, which will be used for Phase 5 Bluff Stabilization. Uh, my goal still is to identify the rest of the funding we need for Del Mar Bluff Phase 5 and 6 within 2021. Uh, Otay Mesa Eat uh, State Route 11. Um, construction work continues on State Route 11 and the Otay Mesa East project. Uh, it's actually State Route 11 project is about 80 days ahead of schedule. Uh, flags have been posted at the port of entry site that map out the facility footprint on the U.S. side of the border. We are also expecting to open bids at the end of this month for southbound State Route 125 connector to westbound State Route 905. Prehistoric fossils were found at an excavation site near State Route 11. These fossils between 16 and 25 million years old were uncovered. The team has been working with the San Diego Natural History Museum to remove and preserve the fossils with minimal impact on construction. On the regional transportation plan, as I indicated uh, at the last meeting, we expect to present the vision to a joint transportation and regional planning committee meeting on August 7th, followed by a week later, August 14th, to this board. We are working with the chair on a site that will accommodate an in-person, socially distant meeting. We are still considering hybrid in-person virtual meetings as well. Before the business presentation, we will be coming to the board and the Transportation Committee to explain some of the data that went into building this plan. We will share the finalized schedule very shortly. And finally, uh, on June 5th, we began a phase reopening of the Sandag offices for employees in our downtown building and at the Toll Operation Center. Many of our directors began working from the office to prepare for those employees who, for productivity needs, 
will be returning to the office next week. We expect that many employees will continue to telework during this phase reopening. We have completed detailed policies and procedures to ensure the safety of staff and to follow all county and state health order. We are continuing to plan for opening the office to the public and to working on having hybrid in-person and virtual meetings for you, our policy advisory committee meetings and our working group meetings. This hybrid mix will not happen until mid-July and we will notify you the PAC and working group chairs of protocols. We thank you for your patience as we work through this. Chair Vass, let's conclude my report. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Hassan. I, I'm not seeing any public comment. Uh, James or Tessa, please correct me if I'm wrong. No, you are correct. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, board comment, I see Mr. Desmond on my screen. Good morning, Supervisor. Good morning, Good morning, Mr. Chair and uh, Hassan. The, um, Hassan, could you, I, 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 could you reiterate what you said about that land that was uh, set aside as mitigation for the 76? It sounded like it was awarded already, or I kind of missed what um, exactly the details of, of where we are with that, uh, that mitigation land. Okay, so uh, I think you're referring to the LILAC project, right? The, the Rancho yeah. LILAC project? Yes. Okay. So uh, this, there were uh, part of the routes, State Route 76 transnet funding was uh, to um, uh, uh, the transnet ordinance for the 76 widening and now Caltrans and Sandag desire to turn the land over to qualified long-term land manager. Yeah, we put here. an RFP out. Uh, they were bidders. We are. We were negotiating with the bidder. This is for maintaining the the the, the area, not owning it, maintaining it. We still Sandag and Caltrans will still own it. So now we're, we we want to continue to work with because of the discussion last time. We approached the county and Caltrans to make sure that access to the trails is part of that discussion. And there is a meeting set up next week to do that before okay, it comes back to the board for action. Okay, I thought I heard that it was already awarded, so I apologize no, for that. Thanks no, for clarifying. No. Okay. Uh, Do we have any other? Just, just, uh, Mr. Chairman, just uh, for to clarify, uh, Supervisor Desmond, there were a competitive RFP process. A, st uh, a qualified land manager was selected and a contract terms were negotiated. I understand that. Thank you very much. But okay. I guess there were more conversations towards the end, and, and okay. the county was asked to participate. We did, and, and I understand it's still a work in progress. So thank you very much. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor. Uh, Council Member Kranz, good to see you. Did you have a question or comment? Can't hear you, Tony. Make sure you're not self muted. Yes, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, express my thanks as well on behalf of the board of the North County Transit District to uh, Representative Mike Levin and the efforts that were made at the federal level to uh, help to obtain the grant of $11.6 million for the next uh, Del Mar Bluff stabilization phase. Um, there has been a, a tremendous focus on the, the need to stabilize the bluffs, and uh, I appreciate all the effort that has gone into that and look forward to the continuing effort to make sure that we get the work done that's necessary to keep that corridor open. So just wanted to add my thanks. Thank you, Council Member. Mayor Sotelo Solis, good to see you. Buenos dias, everyone. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, with the second part of the presentation that uh, Executive uh, Director uh, Agrada mentioned with opening up the building and or looking at uh, spaces that has enough room for potential in, um, in uh, person meetings, I would just, you know, be want to urge us to be very cautious as we move forward we know that the numbers continue to tick up with regards to the uh, COVID-19. And, um, you know, it's still out there. 
And when we start uh, thinking about what we as elected officials, if we are going to head back into the building, is it going to be Loteria where everybody's names in a, in a bucket and we pull out names and those are the lucky ones to get in the building or is it, you know, you know, alphabetical order? I'm always at the end. So we'll see how, <laughs> you know, what, how you decide. But I think um, as we really try to engage in person, um, and I know that there would be options. I just really want to uh, just caution, uh, caution us uh, because we always have a full house when it comes to so many of the issues that are, are important to uh, Sandag and our community. And um, uh, the one thing that I know um, we've been discussing even in our own uh, city hall chambers is whether or not we have partitions uh, in addition to this, uh, you know, uh, all the sanitizing and uh, uh, PPE, uh, what does that look like uh, for our counters? And I know, I, I believe Hassan, you mentioned it last week, that there was uh, some partitions being put up uh, for like our, our, our staff. Um, and I just wanna, again, uh, recognize that effort. And um, as we move forward, Mr. Chair, just as long as we you know keep that cadence, there really is no rush. We we really need to play this uh, safely, especially since it's going to be the elected officials. Well, thank you again for allowing me to make the comment. And, thank and you, Mayor. Chair Vaz, just uh, for Mayor Celis, thank you very much for the comments. Um, and, and our staff here, the emergency response team is ready to answer uh, specifics. But we are taking every precaution that our health advisors are saying, whether it's social distancing, using the elevators, sanitizing the building, obviously the safety of our employees and safety of you all, the board of directors is important. I think we're going to continue to follow the advisories from the county and, and the state, uh, follow them closely. I, I can assure you that every single safety measure that we need to take, we're taking. We will still offer, even with the uh, gradual reopening, we will still offer the, the virtual uh, meeting options. Thank you, Hassan. Uh, any further uh, board uh, comment before we move on to the consent calendar? Seeing none, uh, we will move to the consent calendar. Uh, again, please advise James or Tessa if we have any uh, public comment. These old eyes can't not, see hands raised. Oh, I do not uh, see any hands raised for public comment. Thank you, uh, board comments. Uh, Supervisor Desmond. Uh, I'll make a, a, a motion to approve the consent calendar. Both of these items were heard. Uh, item number four and item number five were heard at the Transportation Committee. Uh, we're recommending approval on these two items. Uh, so, and the other one's a policy advisory committee actions. I'd make a recommendation to approve uh, the consent calendar. Thank you, Supervisor. Uh, looking for a second or further uh, board comment or questions. Mayor Sotelo Solis, it looks like a second. I will second. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I will call on the clerk for the roll call vote. Thank you. City of Carlsbad, Council Member Corey Schumacher. Schumacher, aye. City of Chula Vista is absent. City of Coronado, Mayor Richard Bailey. Yes. yes. It's skewed. Let's San Diego, to, Supervisor Jim Desmond. Um, so, excuse, me, excuse me one second. Can we get uh, everybody uh, to mute their microphones unless they're speaking? We got a lot of noise from somewhere. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just muted. It was one of our staff members. I muted. Um, yeah. Del Mar. Mayor. Thank you, Supervisor. City of Del Mar, Mayor Ali Haviland. Haviland, yes. City of El Cajon, Mayor Bill Wells. <laughs> yes. City of Encinitas, Vice Chair Catherine Blakespear. Blakespear, yes. City of Escondido, Mayor Paul McNamara. McNamara, yes. City of Imperial Beach, Mayor Serge Dedina. Dedina, yes. City of La Mesa is absent. City of Lemon Grove, Mayor Raquel Vasquez. 
Yes. City of National City, Mayor Alejandro Sotelo Solis. Sotelo Solis, aye. City of Oceanside, Deputy Mayor Jack Feller. Yes. City of Poway, Chair Steve Voss. Aye. No, we did that. City of San Diego, Councilmember Vivian Moreno. Moreno, yes. City of San Marcos, Mayor Rebecca Jones. Jones, yes. City of Santee, Mayor John Minto. Minto, yes. City of Solana Beach, Councilmember David Zito. Zito, yes. City of Vista, Mayor Judy Ritter. Ritter, yes. Thank you. That item passes unanimously with those members present. Thank you. We'll move on to item number seven. This is a recommendation from the executive committee regarding the fiscal year 2021 executive director's uh, performance objectives. The executive committee held a special meeting in February and then met again in early May to discuss and finalize uh, the goals you see outlined in the report. And we were asking for the board's approval today. I uh, want to invite any members of that committee uh, to say a few words if they would like. Uh, Vice Chair Blake Spear, anything you'd like to uh, add? No, I don't think so. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other committee members I want to add anything? Uh, Jim, did you want to add or is that for comment uh, well, after public comment? I don't know if you want to. Go through the committee members first. Well, any other committee members, uh, we'll do that first, then take public comment, then board comment. Committee members, going once, going twice. Sure. I don't see any hands raised for public comment. Uh, correct me um, if I'm wrong once again, Mr. James Mayor? and Tessa. No yes. hands raised. Yes, Mr. Mayor, this is Tessa. I did get an email from Dan Summers. He is an attendee and he would like to speak on this item. He's unable to raise his hand from his phone. Um, okay, well, we'll take Mr. Summers. And now he's not, I, I no longer see him. Oh, there you go. Go ahead, Mr. Summers, you're unmuted. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. You have some. Well, I'm Dan, maybe you, uh, if you could take it off of the uh, speaker phone and speak directly into your phone, I think we're getting a feedback loop. All right, copy that. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, speak up. All right, well, good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. I appreciate the opportunity to speak this morning. Uh, my name is Dan Summers. I'm from the remote community planning. Uh, we've been trying desperately for about two years to improve State Route 67 because it is, it is illegal to drive and it fails at the evacuation. You have listened and budgeted improvements for which the people of Ramona are very grateful. And then a pandemic shows up, wreaking havoc with your budget process. I don't need to. But keep in mind, all of us, that safety is your number one priority. Uh, this Senate Bill 743 is an issue. It dictates fewer vehicle miles travel. But I want to comment on that in relation to State Route 67. Improving State Route 67 will not increase vehicle miles traffic. It will only make those vehicle miles safer and give us the opportunity to get out of town in the event of an evacuation. That is the point that I would like to make, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, I'll now go to uh, board member comment. Uh, Supervisor Desmond. Did I hear you? Supervisor Desmond, there you are. Okay, all right. 
Well, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate the uh, opportunity here and, and all the effort that went into uh, the performance project objectives and, and uh, that, that went to executive committee and, and got this done. Uh, unfortunately, there's something here that very fr it frustrates me quite a bit when um, we have our executive director out in public making statements that contradict or, or not that have not been approved by the uh, by the board. On the attachment one of the uh, Sand uh, of the executive director performance objectives, uh, item number bullet number eight. Uh, the eight bullet down. It says uh, that with the objective is to promote harmony with the board by avoiding controversial or highly simplified statements on subjects that have not yet been decided by board members. On June 8th, this Monday, uh, an article, The Voice of San Diego, our executive director made the following statements. And he starts out with it. It says, let me just make a statement. Are we proposing to add any general purpose lanes anywhere? No. Are we adding any pure carpool lanes? No. But we're taking every corridor in San Diego and making sure every corridor has the option of either you pay to travel faster or you take a transit line. We as a board have not, or even the committees have not taken a position on taking anything off the table uh, you know, the board has not acted on any of these items, and our executive director has made this fact in this article that came out on Monday. The, the corridor studies that we haven't, haven't even done yet, and the board hasn't weighed in on, we're paying $36 million for these corridor studies, and they haven't been completed, and we won't see them at even the Transportation Committee until <coughs> September. And unfortunately, this is not the first or the second time that we've asked our direct executive director to not make public policy decisions uh, without the board's approval. This reinforces our need as a board to moderate our executive director's comments and ensure that whatever our executive director says on behalf of this agency reflects the actions of the board. If this were anyone's city manager, these actions would not be tolerated. We all know that these actions, unfortunately, are a pattern that just hasn't stopped, even though we have them in the performance objectives. And it's wrong. Um, you know, I want Sanday to succeed, but we can't have our executive director out there making facts before we as a board have made the decision. It undermines the board's credibility, I think, in public. So because of this, I'm gonna be ma I'm making a motion for a closed session meeting to evaluate our executive director's performance objectives concerning statements made in public. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, let me just check first with uh, uh, Mr. Kirk. Is it possible to, to make a motion for a closed session or would we have to take that first to executive committee to add that to an agenda? Help, help me there. Under board policy one, uh, board policy one, states that any member requesting that an item be considered for inclusion in the agenda must present such request in writing to the chairperson prior to the executive uh, committee's consideration of setting that agenda. Then ultimately the executive committee's setting of that agenda would come to the board for ratification as you've done today. And Mr. Chairman, this is, a, I would also request, which I believe I would like the general counsel to comment because that there will be an open session, not a closed session, because it involved my evaluation. Okay, uh, uh, go ahead, Mr. Kirk. Yes, under, there's an allowance in government code 54957 for closed sessions relating to items including discipline, evaluation of performance or dismissal of a public employee or to hear complaints or charges brought against the employee uh, if it is based upon specific employees or charges brought against the employee, the employee does have the right to uh, request that those be heard in open rather than closed session. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think uh, Mayor Jones popped up my screen first. Thank you. Um, we, we did all talk about this a while back, um, and we were all in agreement that um, our director had gotten out ahead of us and had been speaking in public and we were assured that 
that would not be happening again. So I am, I am concerned about it because we may, I mean, especially with COVID right now, we need to be very flexible. We don't know um, what we're going to be doing uh, moving forward. I think it's um, really important that we don't go out and set an expectation um, that we cannot meet because we haven't voted on this. We haven't fully vetted um, all of the information yet. And, um, you know, we, We've had transparency issues previously, and I think it's really important for us to make sure that we stay on the path of, we're going to get all the information and then we're going to make our decisions before our director is out um, on the streets talking about um, uh, what we, what his plans are when we haven't actually voted on them. And, you know, um, I'm just very concerned because when I, when I read it, I thought, wait, we've already talked about this several times. So. Anyway, I know we, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse. I just, um, I'm very concerned about um, the direction of, um, of our director going out in front of us um, again for an, another time. So anyway, that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, let me go next to uh, Council Member Moreno. Good to see you. Self muted. Uh, good morning. Go everybody i think i was a uh, self-muted there um i just want to take a moment to thank our executive director and um all sandag staff uh for your work on this budget um because of covid 19 pandemic i think putting together a realistic budget was more challenging this year than ever um but i think uh, you vivian, yeah vivian let me just interrupt you may be a little bit ahead of yourself not quite to the budget yet we're still on the uh, uh, executive director performance. Pardon me if I'm misreading you. We're on item seven. Yes. Oh, okay, you're, you're correct. Thank you. I'll wait for my comments. Okay, we'll be glad to have you in just a minute and I'll put you at the front of the queue. Mayor Dedina. Yeah, uh, thanks. Just on the comments on the executive director performance, I guess I, I may live in a different world than our uh, distinguished county supervisor. In the world that I live in, um, I don't have multiple staff to evaluate every apparent newspaper article or media article that's come out in San Diego over the last months to microevaluate whether or not uh, our executive director of Sandex's name appears and there's a quote. You know, I've been spending my time, I have no staff. We have a small city, we don't have a $2 billion budget like the County Board of Supervisors. Again, I don't have our supervisor may have more staff than we have our ex entire executive team at Sandag. I don't have time to manage and micromanage our executive director's state uh, statements, which I find fine. Um, I've been managing the COVID crisis, the economic crisis and collapse, uh, a sewage crisis, which without any help from the federal government. Now we have a crisis of institutional, we've had it, of institutional racism and police violence and police reform, of which, by the way, the, Close to 50% of the County Board of Supervisors budget is sheriff's budget, which obviously needs to be reduced. So I think there are many things that my city is, is, is addressing and I'm addressing personally. I would hope that we also evaluate how much time each individual uh, board member takes in taking up the time of 18 sit member cities and agencies on this board. I find that we have one County Board of Supervisors that seems to have unlimited time at his disposal and staff time to take up huge amounts of time for his own personal issues and political issues when we have so many more issues to address. So I would just hope that the board weighs all these considerations when we seem to spend countless hours that most of us don't have, happen to have. We have certain members that have unlimited staff time to evaluate and micromanage and microevaluate every minor issue that has to do with SANDAG and how we address the multiple crises that face our region and our country. Thank you. Any further board uh, member comment uh, on this item? Uh, Mayor Sotelo Solis, did you want to speak? Ready. Okay, uh, I just want to you know, echo the sentiment of Mayor Dedina. I think there's uh, quite a few issues uh, that are facing our community and that have been at the forefront and priorities for many uh, of our elected officials. Uh, and in particular, the people that sit around the table uh, or the dais there at Sandag. And so 
one thing that I, you know, I'm, I'm concerned with when, when folks say that there's lack of transparency or there's misinformation being put out, I know that what was said in those quotes, and again, um, you know, Mr. Desmond can maybe reread what those quotes are. I know that we have discussed those in public and we have had an opportunity to vet those ideas, not in their entirety, but we have had conversations. So for it to be said that it's uh, taking a step uh, beyond what we're comfortable with, I think it may be the comfort level of certain members and that's not necessarily the case with all members. I think as long as we pr are provided the information, we trust and are moving forward. Um, again, as a member of the Transportation Committee, I wear the, my MTS hat, um, but as we get information from the Executive Director, I'd rather have more information and hear that we as a, a board continue to move forward. And, you know, we have a crisis, like, uh, unless we are in the red and bleeding resources that are not going to be coming to our community, our role is a cog, uh, county, um, uh, uh, region of governments. We are, our goal is to uh, do what's best for our region. And so far, we're doing okay. Now, National City could use some more resources, but that's uh, an aside. I just really feel that we are, we're doing what we're, we need to do. And, um, I don't think there's a need for closed session on this item. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council President Gomez, good morning. Good morning. Um, yeah, I, I would agree with Mayor um, Alejandro Sotelo Solis. And uh, I, I just think um, I am hopeful. And, and I don't know, I'm just going to throw out something that I think we, we, we need to acknowledge um because this is a constant repetitive um battle that i mean if we're reflecting every single board meeting it's got to be it, there's there's this tension um between our executive director or being targeted at our executive director and i'm i'm i don't know that it, it really has to it's it's a little bit tiring um i think we need to create a space in which we need to trust our executive director and our staff to really get us to where they where we need to get to and that place might not be the place that we all agree to um i don't think that we all agree that it's that by um our executive director Hassan making statements and stating something that he might think that's where the agency needs to do i don't agree that that he shouldn't be saying that so for for statements to be said that we all agree I think it's. Uh, I, I would caution us to to be uh, putting the whole board as we're, we're um, saying the statements collectively because I'm not part of that. Uh, so just I think as we're engaging, uh, we should speak as an I, uh, not the we. Um, but but also, uh, it, it is tiring every single board meeting having to have these discussions, these discourses that are not really fruitful at the end of the day. I'll ask the chair that maybe there could be some sort of mediation brought in to, to move us to a more productive space, just because this, this type of discussion is not, honestly, it's not productive at all. Um, I'm, 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 I'm only hoping that we can get to a better place where we can have better, better, better discussions and how to move us forward. And, and uh, and I, I am asking the chair perhaps if you can look at uh, having some sort of mediation brought forward uh, that can really assist us in moving to to a, a productive space. I think that would be very useful. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do. There's still a, a climate crisis. Uh, we are in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, we are in the middle of an economic crisis. And this type of 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 tension that continues to be thrown is not productive. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. I do ask the chair that you please consider bringing some sort of mediation um, that can help us move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. Uh, Council Member Moreno, did you wanna speak on this item? Yeah, after, um, after just hearing everything that um, my colleagues have said, um, I couldn't disagree more with uh, Supervisor Desmond's motion 
I think the statement made by the executive director, I don't think it was simplistic nor contrary to board uh, to the board's direction. I think supervisor, the only simplistic statements that are being made that honestly just threaten uh, the board's harmony are being made by you. Um, on this statement, I think you're very angry with Khan because you want him to violate state law and ignore greenhouse gases to further widen uh, the freeway. Sandag just can't do that. We tried it in the past and we lost. And I, to be honest, I think you owe Hassan an apology on this. That concludes my comments. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other board comment? Uh, Mr. Desmond. I have a question for um, our county council, or not county council, our council, uh, where you mentioned that, um, I guess the motion I put out there, I, don't, I didn't hear a second, but you say I have to put a letter of request into the chair and then ask to bring it forward at a meeting. So I didn't do the written request. So is that what you're saying and what's missing? Well, that, let me just weigh in here. Uh, I think one of the problems here is that, you know, the the motion goes, you know, beyond the scope of the noticed item. Uh, as I would with any other item that a board member uh, brings forward, I would be happy to add this to the uh, executive committee uh, agenda for discussion. And I think uh, we can include in that discussion uh, Council President Gomez's recommendation uh, for mediation. But, you know, we, we need to hash this out and, and see if the executive committee and wants to put that uh, on the agenda uh, for uh, a board meeting. I think that's the right way to proceed uh, with this. Uh, so uh, I don't feel a need for a written request. Uh, I hear your request, and I, I think it needs to go to the executive committee uh, for consideration for a future board event. Go ahead, Jim. All right. I, I would just like to comment, um, you know, I want this agencies to succeed. And this is not personal between Hassan and myself. I, I think you know, this, it undermines when he goes out and he says things. And I'd do this if it was our CAO at the, at the county. I'd do it if it was my city manager. I'm sorry if it's inconvenient or you don't have, people don't have staff time. I did not spend countless hours on this. Quite frankly, I don't relish in doing this. But I want this sand egg to succeed for future generations. And I don't want it undermined. And the board power taken away. I think it's still wrong that he's doing it. And if the wrong is inconvenient or the wrong suits you, that it's still wrong and still needs to be addressed. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Desmond. Uh, going back to the uh, uh, executive director's performance objectives uh, for fiscal year 2021, I'm happy to make the motion. Uh, to approve those uh, performance objectives, I'd be looking for a second. This is Catherine. I'll second. Thank you. Uh, and again, I want I want to reiterate that uh, I will bring this request for a closed session to the executive committee, and uh, also being mindful of the comments from Council President Gomez. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Tessa, uh, please the roll call vote. Thank you, Chair Moss. City of Carlsbad, Council Member Corey Schumacher. Schumacher, aye. City of Chula Vista is absent. City of Coronado, Mayor Richard Bailey. Bailey, yes. County of San Diego, Supervisor Jim Desmond. Desmond, yes. City of Del Mar, Mayor Ellie Haviland. Evelyn, yes. City of El Cajon, Mayor Bill Wells. Yes. City of Encinitas, Vice Chair Catherine Blakespear. Blakespear, yes. City of Escondido, Mayor Paul McNamara. Escondido, yes. City of Imperial Beach, Mayor Serge Tadina. Tadina, yes. City of La Mesa is absent. City of Lemon Grove, Mayor Raquel Vasquez. Vasquez, yes. City of National City, Mayor Alejandro Sotelo Solis. Sotelo Solis, aye. City of Oceanside, Deputy Mayor Jack Feller. Yes. 
City of Poway, Chair Steve Voss. Yes. City of San Diego, Council Member Vivian Moreno. Moreno, yes. City of San Marcos, Mayor Rebecca Jones. Jones, yes. City of Santee, Mayor John Minto. Minto, yes. City of Solana Beach, Council Member David Zito. Zito, yes. <clears throat> City of Vista, Mayor Judy Ritter. Ritter, yes. Thank you. That item passes unanimously with those members present. Thank you. Moving on to our final report of the day, item number eight, the proposed fiscal year 2021 program budget. Uh, Hassan, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning, board members. Uh, it is my pleasure today to introduce you to the final budget um, uh, for fiscal year 2021. Uh, overall, the budget uh, increased by 29 million or two and a half percent from draft budget. Uh, let me just apologize to you because we did not send the budget uh, what uh, the week before, Friday before, as, as planned, giving the short time period of preparation. But given that you have the draft budget, the only changes uh, from the draft to the final is what I'm going through right now, which is an increase of $29 million or 2.5%. This is good news, as most uh, of these increases from outside funding coming into the agency. The three main changes are 27.4 million of federal funds have been added to the state route 11 and Otay Mesa East Port of Entry projects. These funds were added to the final budget following the California Transportation uh, Committee consideration of programming the funds at their May meeting. 13.8 million construction cooperation agreement for a new project UCSD mid-cost improvement, uh, Lehman Roundabout funded by UCSD. And then the Del Delmar Bluff, which we spoke about earlier, stabilization project received 4.9 million from the transit and intercity rail capital program in April, and 11.6 million from the Federal Railroad Administration. Uh, all of those totaling 27.4 has been added uh, to the budget. Uh, I would like uh, to uh, uh, thank uh, Mayor Jones for bringing to our attention what was determined to be a clerical error in the budget that has now been fixed. Uh, I um, appreciate all of you working with us. As I promised uh, from the very beginning, uh, when uh, President, uh, uh, Council President Gomez initiated, this budget is presented to you today as a final budget, but with the understanding that we will come back to you every quarter, uh, giving uh, the COVID-19 impact and how it impacts the budget, we will come to you every quarter uh, for this budget to make sure uh, that if needed uh, changes or updates, that you will be able to do it. Uh, Mr. Chairman and board members, uh, with these uh, um, few changes from the draft budget, uh, I'm uh, ready with my team to answer your questions. Uh, I also ask you for approval of the final budget. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hassan. Uh, public comment. Uh, do we have any hands raised, uh, team? I do not see any hands raised. Thank you. Uh, board comments, please. Turn your cameras on. Council Member Moreno. Now. Oh, you're muted. Here's your still muted. Thank you. Um, as you I start, thank you. Um, as I started saying uh, a few minutes ago, I wanted to um, thank our executive uh, director and all of the staff uh, for working on this budget. Um, I think you and the staff did a, a fantastic job. Um, I'd also like to point out just for future reference that when questions were raised about that administration uh, budget and concerns were presented uh, that the budget included uh, stay, uh, what was it? Um, staff raises. 
all of the initial answers that were presented by Hassan and staff turned out to be completely accurate. Uh, we ended up hearing the budget at an additional meeting just to confirm that all the answers initially uh, that you know that they were given that all the answers were correct in essence. So I would urge fellow board members to keep this in mind uh, the next time that question that somebody questions the accuracy of Sandag staff's response. Um, and with that, I'd like to support the motion um, and or make a motion to support staff's recommendation. And that concludes uh, my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, board members, additional comment or questions? We have a motion on the table. Mayor Jones. Thank you. I, I just wanted to thank staff again for um, going through the um, information and showing us that there was no difference between uh, what was proposed and then what uh, we are approving here today as far as staff budgets go. I personally appreciate the transparency. I am so grateful for all of the hard work that all of our staff has done, and I will second that motion. Thank you. Further board member comments or questions? I too appreciate the additional work that staff went through to answer the questions uh, uh, that came up in our first visit with the draft. Uh, seeing no further board member comments or questions, uh, we have a motion and a second. I will call on uh, Tessa to take a roll call vote. Thank you. Count City of Carlsbad, Council Member Corey Schumacher. Schumacher, yes. City of Chula Vista is absent. City of Coronado, Mayor Richard Bailey. Mayor Bailey? Ba Bailey, yes. Thank you. County of San Diego Supervisor Jim Desmond. Desmond, yes. City of Del Mar, Mayor Ellie Haviland. Haviland, yes. City of El Cajon, Mayor Bill Wells. Yes. City of Encinitas, Vice Chair Catherine Blakespear. Blakespear, yes. City of Escondido, Mayor Paul McNamara. You are self-muted, Mayor. I will come back to Mayor McNamara. City of Imperial Beach, Mayor Serge Dedina. Dedina, yes. City of La Mesa is absent. City of Lemon Grove, Mayor Raquel Vasquez. Mayor Vasquez, yes. City of National City, Mayor Alejandra Sotelo Solis. Sotelo Solis, aye. City of Oceanside, Deputy Mayor Jack Feller. Yes. City of Poway, Chair Steve Voss. Yes. City of San Diego, Council Member Vivian Moreno. Moreno, yes. City of San Marcos, Mayor Rebecca Jones. Jones, yes. City of Santee, Mayor John Minto. Minto, yes. City of Solana Beach, Council Member David Zito. Zito, yes. City of Vista, Mayor Judy Ritter. Vista, yes. Mayor McNamara, City of Escondido. And I'm getting no response from Mayor McNamara. So I will mark that vote as absent. That item passes unanimously with those members present. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't believe we have any continued public comment. Looking for hands, I see none. Uh, our next meeting is uh, June 26th at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, appreciate you all being here today. We're adjourned.